Hey guys, before we get started on today's episode, I just want to give you a quick word on behalf of our sponsor, Whisker Seeker Tackle. They offer a variety of hooks for the different types of catfishing, whether that's circle hooks for when the fish picks up your bait, runs off with it and hooks themselves, or when you just need to set the hook on them with the Super J hooks. They also have the triple threat hybrid circle hook, which has the best of both worlds. So head on over to whiskerseeker.com, use the coupon code below to save yourself 25%. Other than that, hope you guys enjoy today's episode. All right, guys. Uh, ready? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Grandy with Ma Pop Fishing. We have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And today we have a actually a really super excited to have this guest today, uh, Scott Thomas, and he's the is it the, you're the product man product develop manager for Cast King. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. Yes. Awesome. So this is the man that does a lot of the. St- stuff that I dream about <laughs> and wish that I knew. And uh, I'm pretty sure you have so many things that are up and coming and everything that we, you know, us as, you know, just consumer would just love to, to know a little bit about more, but um, oh, yeah. te- you know what? Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity, Scott. Uh, you, you don't mind. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, how you became uh, part of cast King and, and pretty much what you do for them. Okay. Yeah. As you, as you guys know, I, I actually grew up in Iowa, in North Central Iowa on a farm and uh, went to Iowa State University. And um, it seems like ever since then, I kept moving farther south. And uh, now I'm in uh, Georgia, uh, outside of Atlanta and working for uh, Casking. So I've been in the fishing industry a long time. I worked for Pure Fishing. I've worked for Lou's and uh, developing products for many, many years in, in several dis- different industries. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where you, you know, you have a passion for outdoors or fishing or whatever. And uh, I was just fortunate to kind of get into the industry and um, never wanted to leave. So I've been in and out a few times and uh, hopefully this is my last time because it's, it's a lot of fun. That's it's awesome. Fun. And, and just um, not, I totally messed up. Um, <laughs> we forgot about oh. the beard. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's on me on that. Don't worry. Uh, so quick shout out to Kelowna Brewing Company. Again, they're the sponsor of our, our podcast and, and also they, they help donate beer to us. So uh, I can't, can't forget about them, especially when they provide me with this amazing stout again. I'm doing the startup stout. What do you got, Kit? Yeah, I got, I'm, I'm taking it easy. So I got their Kelowna Classic. It's their light lager. Nice. And then, yeah. uh, so, so we, so, you know, this is a, a man amongst boys. Um, so just so everybody <laughs> knows on that, Scott, what do you got? <laughs> uh, well, I've got some uh, bourbon from uh, St. Augustine, Florida, and it's really good. So, you know, I'm, I'm the older of the three here by far. So, you know, with age comes, you got to go to harder stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wiser. I, I would say you're just wiser. I wouldn't or say maybe. older. Just why? Cheers, cheers, <laughs> thanks, right, guys. Cheers. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm telling you guys. Um, anybody who's in the, near the Iowa City area, Kelowna Brewery is literally, I think, 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, just south of Iowa City. Swing by their brewery is amazing. They have restaurant and everything. So um, this coffee stout is. I don't know if you had it yet, Kit. You gotta try it, man. Uh, um, does does it have caffeine? Does do coffee stouts have caffeine? I believe they do. Uh, I, I I could be wrong. I, I used to brew beer a long, long, long time ago. I I, I think, they, I think they put coffee in the beer, so I would think it has yeah. caffeine. Yeah, I, I believe they do. I'm, I'm gonna have to look that. Some somebody can uh, uh, fact check us on that, but I think you're right, kid. I think it does have caffeine. They put like uh, coffee beans because because I know for a f- <sighs> when when I uh, when I was brewing beer when I did a vanilla stout, I put like fresh vanilla beans in. So I would assume coffee they would put fresh coffee beans grounds at least the beans in i would think yeah i I quit drinking coffee so i i try to stay away from the stouts (laughs) (laughs) so yeah uh, yeah but all right guys drink it up man cheers um so tell us about casking i know um so this is the thing I know a lot of people know about Casking because you guys, it's a small company, which is cool, you know, but 
you guys are growing at a phenomenal rate. Fast. Yes. And yeah. I see your guys's products and everything all over everything from tackle warehouse to Amazon, obviously. But yeah. the cool thing about it is just the, how fast you guys are growing. So how, how are you guys doing it? And, and what, what is it that you guys are doing that's making you guys so successful in regards to growth? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the company was started, just to give, give you guys a little bit of background, the company was started about seven years ago and um, by a couple of gentlemen that graduated from uh, Syracuse. And so they started just kind of buying and selling fishing lines. So they sourced some fishing lines, started selling it. They did some baits and slowly got into reels and got to the point where they started building up and um, bringing on some people to develop more of their own products. So um, myself and another gentleman, uh, Al Noriker, he started probably about uh, six months before I did. I've been with the company about three years mm -hmm. and, uh, so both of us have been in the fishing industry a long time developing products. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons we've been growing so rapidly uh, the last several years is because we are developing a lot of new products and bringing them to market. And uh, it, it was intriguing the, um, the, the business model that was set up because it was, you know, originally direct to consumers. It wasn't through retail chains, but we do some retail, um, but that wasn't our main focus. And, um, you know, we, uh, you guys have noticed, I think too, we, there's a, a lot of new products coming out all the time and, uh, uh, our, our tagline is affordable innovation. So we're trying to bring affordable products to as many anglers as we can and try and get more people into, into the sport, more people fishing and excited about it. And, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun developing products as fast as you can because, you know, when you're kind of in the, the, the corporate world, it takes a lot longer. You got all the steps you got to go through and, uh, and then you got to sell to the buyers who then sell to the consumers. And so it takes a lot longer. And uh, this just allows us to, you know, work direct with the consumers and try and get products out to them as quick as we can. So uh, we're selling on, as you pointed out earlier on Tackle Warehouse, we sell on our own website, which is casking.com. We sell a lot of products through there. We sell some on eBay as well, um, but most of it's probably uh, through Amazon and, and our own website. But uh, it's, I mean, we've got everything from um, tackle bags to hats to shirts to pliers to uh, fishing line, rods, reels, combo, sunglasses. I mean, you name it, we're, we're, uh, basically trying to develop almost everything you need to go fishing. So we got other stuff coming too all the time. Nice. So, but it's, uh, you know, we, we started doing um, trade shows a few or consumer shows a few years ago, just to kind of get the awareness out there. And it's, uh, it's been really good for us because we have a lot of fans that uh, our casking fans already have used our products and they come out to the, those shows and see us and buy other products. And we have other, uh, people that are interested and they've heard about us and seen us and, you know, seen things on social media, but they haven't pulled the trigger to really try the product. They're skeptical saying, well, how can that reel be that good if it's half the price of this other reel? And uh, so once they get their hands on the product and they see it, you know, it's, it's usually an, an easy sell for them and they become fans of ours. So it's been good to go out and do some of those consumer shows. Nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, Scott. So like um, you, you were just talking about uh, how all, you guys have all these different kinds of products. So what are some of the what are some of the factors that decide, like, you know, what products you guys should market or what tar what market you, you guys would try to target? Uh, what's the decision making factors behind that? Well, some of it's um, just opportunities that come up to us. Um, but a lot of times what we're trying to do is, is solve a problem for the angler, you know. So if we see. We might hear, that's another uh, good thing about doing some of the consumer shows is you get to talk to consumers and they explain that they've either modified something or they have a problem with something. And, and you're like, you know what? I think I can fix that. And you go back and design and develop something that addresses their issue. Um, and that's a real good way to, to develop the products because you've already got 
uh, people that are trying to do it on their own and uh, you know, there's market there. So, but at the same time, we, we got to take a look at the whole market and see where the opportunities are, what's going to sell and make sure we're at the right uh, retail price points and, and the product is right for that, uh, that retail market. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Is uh, I just, you know, when you brought up in regards to uh, pricing and everything, is it because not having that middleman, I guess in a way gives you guys the flexibility to be able to obviously be very, um, I guess, aggressive in, in regards to pricing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that, I'm that's sorry, go ahead. True. That's true. Exactly. I mean, we're, and, and that's, like I said, that's how we, we kind of started was, um, you know, we wanted to uh, sell to the consumers and mm-hmm. uh, give them the best value that we can. And, and that's our whole business model. But uh, it's, uh, I, I tell you what, um, we are developing products so fast and bringing so many products out. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun too, because the, uh, you know, the people out there get, the consumers out there get excited about the product and, mm-hmm. and uh, it kind of feeds on itself. So do you guys have any Cast King products or not? Uh, I actually, I, do not. I don't. Yeah. So that's oh, why I want to get you guys hooked up then, huh? Nice. So, um, <laughs> but that's why I wanted, you know, I can hopefully I'm not, or you're not going to spill the beans, but what's the cool shit that you got coming up? I, I want to see it. I want to know about, cause I, everybody, they're like, if you got a product developer guy on there, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't tell them that we did. Cause they're like, you guys got it. Cause somebody did tell us, yo, you guys should have somebody who knows about the products developing it and all that stuff. Yeah. You find out what's the cool that they got going on. So I was like, is there well, anything we, we, that you can tell us a little bit, maybe? Well, we just launched some new rods uh, this week. They're called the Kong rods. Okay. And they're for big fish, catfish, um, you know, bigger saltwater fish, musky. Um, and uh, so far, they're doing real good. So um, we've got some reels coming out in the next few months, new reels coming. Um, but one of the, one of the things we do have, uh, we have a, a live show on, uh, Facebook every Tuesday night and it's right now it's at, what time would that be for you guys? I think it's seven o'clock your time. Yeah. Uh, AJ Gore has a show, a show on seven o'clock and he kind of goes through some of the new stuff as we're launching it and talks about the product and the features and everything. So that's something that you can follow and your, your listeners can follow too, that if they're interested in uh, learning more about our products. I'm going to have to really check that out. That's going to be yep. cool. cool. Absolutely. So do you, do you guys fish much or not? I mean, awesome. I don't, I don't know a lot about you guys yet because we, uh, <laughs> we just contacted each other a couple of weeks, a week or two ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So I fish, I'll, you know, whenever I can, I got four daughters that are, well, it's going to be eight and under here now. So it's a little tough. I, I, I try to get out as much as I can now. Just because I go out a lot, no, I'm not great or good. But this guy over here, um, I live through him because you know he's he, he he's he's my fishing idol in a way. Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah. I try to I try to fish as much as I can. Um, the the like I don't have, I I don't have kids. You know, I don't have a. Oh. I'm not married, so I just go whenever I can. Oh man, you got the perfect situation. Smart, then, right? smart man. Right now. <laughs> But, you know, if people think you got to know a lot to go fishing, but you really don't. I mean, it's a lot. Fishing is different in every place you go. So you got to learn it. Um, you got to learn the body of water you're on. You got to learn what techniques you need to use. You got to learn the baits you need. It, it's different everywhere. And um, it, it's interesting being in the industry that you learn and see a lot of these things, you know, like the guys down here bass fish they have different techniques than they do you know up in iowa and uh, so it's you learn different techniques that you can try in different areas too saltwater fishing inshore fishing lake fishing river fishing it's it's uh i've learned so much just from going different places and fishing and i'm not an expert either but i like to say i'm a jack of all trades and master of none which is probably pretty accurate (laughs) yeah and and then just so our listeners viewers know yes uh scott here actually attended iowa state university um Mm -hmm. i i went to iowa state also but i was that guy though everybody hated because i was a hawkeye fan since i was 
born, but I went to Iowa. Oh State. man! But I went to Iowa State, so I was that because we. I don't know if you know we had the Iowa DNR Jeff Capasco on, and he he's like, you would have been that guy. I saw you up at the wreck, and I would just elbow you when we played basketball. <laughs> so even because I was that guy. Um, but yeah, just so everybody knows, I I know you're from Iowa State, so that was so cool yeah. that you know when I looked into you a little bit, I was like dude that's so awesome that he's from iowa state and um you know kind of bring bring him home in a little bit in a way right. on, on, on right. our podcast so uh we, we do have quite a bit of actually cyclone listeners so just just oh do you awesome. okay well that's awesome you know I, I i saw one of your uh one of your shows where you were um interviewing somebody in spirit like iowa a guy that i don't remember his name he has a shop there oh travis travis of, uh, yeah. stands yeah. Bait and tackle yeah. So I, I lived there for a while because I worked for Pure Fishing. So I lived in Spirit Lake for, I don't know, five years probably. And uh, it's beautiful up there. It's But it's it's pretty cold too <laughs> in the wintertime. Yep. I mean, yep. it's windy, cold. Uh, the ice fishing is great. The fishing in the in the spring and the fall is really good. So it's, it's a good place to be if you like to be outdoors, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Hey Scott, I, I want to ask you. Um, so, what, where do you draw inspiration when you're coming out with new products? But you guys are coming out with stuff all the time. Like, what, what, what's this pool that you're drawing all these ideas from? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. That's a good question because the good ideas come from everywhere. You know, uh, some sometimes, like I said, it comes from consumer shows, talking to consumers. Other times, it's uh, people contact us with ideas and or. They might say, hey, I'm doing this at home. You guys should do something to fix this problem. Or they may have made something on their own mm -hmm. and, and we can, you know, uh, design something a little better and, and manufacture a lot cheaper and sell it as a product. So it just it just depends. They come from everywhere. I, I, I can't say it. the inspiration comes from one specific place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, because a, a lot of times what I like to do, too, is I'll go out and I fish a lot of places and um, I'll go fishing with guys and I'll look through their boat or their kayak or whatever and see what they're using, what they made that they couldn't find to buy and uh, think, I wonder if there's a market for that. And if there is, then we'll develop something to, uh, to replace, you know, the homemade item that they made. So <laughs> that's always kind of fun too. Yeah. What would you say is like the, um, a I wouldn't say the biggest complaint from consumers, but what's the one thing that, you, when, like you say, when you go to these trade shows or whatnot, what, what do consumers ask you guys the most about? What do you, what do you think is the number one thing that, that you guys are trying to, to help them figure out whether it's, you know, pricing, whether it's specific, you know, reels or items or tactics, things like that, whatever the case may be, what, what's the one thing that you hear the most from consumers? Well, um, I think those shows are good because a lot of consumers get overwhelmed with, and you guys probably find this too, with all the different choices of rods and reels and fishing line. How do I know what to use, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, depending on who comes in, we, we try and help educate them on the products and, and depending on the type of fishing they're doing, what they should be using and why they should be using it. So, And it's kind of fun because you get – people have been fishing a long time that, you know, know the products they use, but they may not know that there's a better product or item or rod or reel or something they can use for the technique they're using. Mm. And so you can help them figure that out. Or you get guys coming in that, you know, because a lot of people start out using spin cast reels or spinning reels and they want to try a bait cast reel, but they may have tried it once and it gets a bird's nest and, they can never get it out and then they don't want to mess with it anymore. Right. Yep. And, and a lot of that problem can be solved just by setting a reel up correctly with along with the bait and line and everything else. So it's kind of fun to um, go that through that with people and educate them. So they understand, you know, you got to have the, the, the brake set, right. You got to have the uh, uh, fine adjustments set, right. You've got to adjust the, the braking based on the weight of the lure you're using so once you go through that and kind of take them through it and show them how to cast a few times, and uh, usually it doesn't take long to figure it out. It takes a little practice, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun to learn, and, and it's a lot more accurate once you do figure it out. 
Yep. Nope. I agree yeah. with you. I, I was that guy because you know what I did. Hey, Bird's Nest. Hey, Kit, what are you doing? <laughs> can you? Yeah. Get bird? <laughs> I, I would. Hand, I would hand it to him. Like, gosh, yeah. darn it! I got a Bird's Nest. He can help me get it out real quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, I hate it when I get um, I'll get a new reel and I'll get it set up and I'll start casting and I slowly turn the brakes down, you know, and cast farther and farther and then I get too confident and. This, yep. That's exactly. Then I got to mess with my hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. but yeah I, learned, yeah I learned that less is more when you're trying to undo the um the bird's nest because yeah. some people just start pulling like really hard at everything and you're only making it worse so i always yeah. tell him like just gently you know gently tug at stuff if, if right. it doesn't want to give pull somewhere else right exactly yeah it takes a little bit to figure it out the first few times i did it i'm like I just got to cut this line off and start over again, <laughs> but that takes too long, you know? Yeah. It gets expensive too. If it you does. Yeah. Bad. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, do you miss Iowa at all fishing up? Uh, what's the biggest difference between, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, different species here and there, but I mean, w- yeah. what's the biggest difference fishing where you're at in, in, in Iowa? Um, you know, there are a lot of differences because in Iowa, I did a lot of walleye fishing and um, Northern Pike, I mean, once in a while, bass, but I didn't really fish a lot for bass when I was there. And, and it's a lot more bass fishing down here. And okay. we have some cold water streams, so we got trout here too. Um, but I really miss uh, walleye fishing because I used to, when I lived in Spirit Lake, I was only a few miles from work. So, you know, especially in the fall and in the, in the spring when the season opened, I'd stop at the lake and I'd have my stuff in my truck and I'd stop at the lake and fish on my way home and catch a couple of fish and go home and eat it. And I'm like, it's so fresh. It's so good when you do that. You know, it's just incredible. Mm. And uh, I can't do that here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But And ice fishing, you know, I really enjoy ice fishing too. It's, it's nice to be out on the, on the ice and uh, people are, think you're crazy especially down here like why would you want to sit out on a frozen lake and fish for fish through the ice so but, yeah yeah just so everybody knows i mean we're recording this episode and we just had a blizzard <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is um yeah people because i have a lot of family in hawaii and they just saw my post like yeah we're not visiting you any t- anytime soon man <laughs> that's oh, pretty man. much what they said yeah so well, you, you, uh, go ahead oh so you obviously love fishing and you're working and i guess what a lot of people would say like the dream job um <laughs> so what's like what's what's the most rewarding aspect of what you do you know what's the most rewarding is, is uh seeing some of the products you develop out there and they're out there for years or you're somewhere and you see people using the product uh, you know when i was at uh Pure Fishing, we developed this uh, surf cart and uh, for surf fishing, and it's the Berkeley Surf Cart, and uh, it it was probably launched I don't know five years ago, maybe six years ago, and it's still out there being sold at Bass Pro, and I see them all over the place when I go to the beach. So it's kind of cool to to see those things and see people enjoying and loving fishing with with some of the products you develop, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow, that's crazy! Like a company in Iowa is make or developed a surf fishing cart. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they. I don't know if you guys know much about pure fishing, but they their headquarters is in uh, South Carolina. So mm. you know they merged or got bought out by Shakespeare several years ago, and then they moved the headquarters down there. But they they still have manufacturing up in Spirit Lake where they're doing baits and fishing. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. What would you say, like? Um, what differentiates Cast King from Shimano, from all the other, you know, you know, Abu Garcia, all those, you know, what, what makes you guys a little bit different, whether it's product development or anything like that? What would you say is like the biggest difference between you and them? Well, that's a good question. I mean, you know, we're a lot smaller company and um, I think probably our advantage is because we are small, we can do things a lot faster, you know, mm-hmm. you're in a larger company, you've got um, so many more uh, gates to go through and, and so many more steps to go through to, to get the product to market and get it approved and everything else where we can make decisions fairly quickly. So, I mean, that, that has really helped us out a lot, I think. Yeah. 
I'm, I know what you mean in, in regards to getting the processes when you're in a huge corporation, um, yeah. you can't, you can't get things done. So that that's, you're right. It's the biggest benefit of having a small business or, or owning a small business or, you know, being right. part of a family. Cause you can just, like you just said, you know what, that doesn't look right. We're changing it right now. Or that, right. Does, that doesn't work. We're changing it right now. Versus those huge corporations that could take months because right. you got to get that approval, then that approval, and then that approval. See, that's, that's that. True. And that's, that's the, true. Yeah. And, but and, on the, on the other hand, you know, we don't have the, the resources they do either. So, you know, to, to develop things, we've got to, we've got to kind of pick and choose where we invest our, our money uh, when we're developing new items too, and make sure we're doing our best to pick the right ones to invest in. So it's a little riskier for us, but it's also a lot more fun because we can turn on a dime mm. a lot quicker than most, most can. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is, is there anything that, uh, since you've been with casting, is there like one thing that you're most proud of that you've done there? Um, if you had to pick one thing. Well, uh, probably so far. Well, that's a good question. That's a tough question, actually. <laughs> uh, so, so to people listening and watching, he has done so much that he can't, he can't just pick one thing. Hello, Kit. <laughs> All right, so I, I was going to say, uh, initially I was going to say we did a, a, a rod rack. It's called a V15 rod rack, and it's a okay. – it's a and you go to our website and look it up, or you can go to Amazon and look it up, but it's about 17 inches long, and it's got little V grooves in it, and it's got rubber lined along those V grooves. So you mount this on the wall, and all you do is you push your rod into um, those V grooves, and the rubber grabs it. So it's a – it's a rod or combo holder and you can put, I think it's 15 different um, combos in it. And it's nice because you can stagger the reels up and down. So in about 17 inches of wall space, you can put 15 combos. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good product and it functions really well. Um, also I did, uh, I did sunglasses when I was at Pure Fishing, so I launched all the sunglasses here at Cast King, and we keep adding more and more styles, and uh, we've got some really good uh, sunglasses. If you guys get a chance, you ought to check them out. But I like to do, I'll show you this. So this, I like to do this, especially at a show, because people's eyes about pop out of their head when you show them this. Oh, really? So this is, a, we use a high grade of nylon uh, called Grill Me. It's a, it's a branded uh, material, or TR90 actually, that's made in Switzerland. Hmm. And so this material is really light, even though so this is a really thick frame, it's really light uh, sunglasses, mm -hmm. but I can do this with it. Oh. <laughs> and it. It'll go right back to the way it was. Wow. So people are listening to this. What Scott just did, he literally just took his, the glasses, sunglasses, and just made them completely horizontal. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's crazy. We got really good lenses. And, you know, we sell these for, uh, I think it's anywhere from 20 to $25 retail. So they're really good sunglasses come with a, a case and a, and a microphone fiber case you can use to clean the lenses and stuff too polarized oh, okay so okay so yeah that's my biggest thing i mean i we we've had so many like professional fishermen and just like like amazing fishermen on our podcast i never really asked them about sunglasses so i'm glad you brought that up does it really make a damn difference because there's so many sunglasses everybody's like oh you gotta get these polarized sunglasses and <laughs> i've had them before or i don't know it wasn't i mean it wasn't designed for fishing but i've had polarized i have polarized sunglasses i, I wear yeah. them i'm like what's the damn difference it, it didn't help me in that sense so the, is there really a specific polarized the dedicated for fishing versus just regular pol polarized sunglasses um well polarized will help you in general um because what polarization does is you can kind of think of it as some blinds in your window right you can turn them this way and it blocks all light turn them this way and lets light through right Mm -hmm. so it's like having blinds in your sunglasses so lights coming at you from all different directions right some's bouncing off the water some mine's bouncing off the snow or something to your right something to your left so what it does is it filters out all that reflected light mm -hmm. and so you only get the light that's coming straight into the sunglasses so what that does is that eliminates the glare that you see so you can actually see deeper into the water so it 
gets rid of all that light coming from other directions. The other thing that people don't think about um, sunglasses and fishing is what color lens do I use? Mm. There is a difference um, depending on the type of fishing you're going to do. We use really three different color base lenses. I, I'll call them base lenses. It's the color of the lens before you put it. Like this one has a, a mirror coating on it, a green mirror coating. Mm-hmm. And uh, that changes the color a little bit, but it really doesn't change how the lens reacts and filters out different color. So if you're like in bright, sunny conditions and, uh, and you want the most realistic um, colors coming through that you can see in your sunglasses, then you want to do like a smoke or a gray lens. So that really doesn't change any of the colors and it blocks out a lot of light. Um, this one particular one, I don't know if you guys can see it, is behind me. It's a brown lens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the brown lens uh, filters out some of the uh, red lights and blue lights. And so this uh, color of a lens will allow you to see deeper into the water and uh, it provides more contrast. So if if you've got a grassy bottom or you've got fish in there, it'll have more contrast so you can see those things easier with a brown lens. Hmm. So that's what a brown lens is good for. If you're, if you're fishing and it's bright or overcast, the brown lens works well. Mm-hmm. If you're fishing and it's really overcast and kind of dark, mm-hmm. then you want to use probably like a copper lens or an amber lens. That also has the uh, a little bit more contrast than a brown lens. So like greens are going to be greener. You know, the browns are going to be browner. You'll see more contrast in the water and under the water. And, um, and it'll let a little bit more light in too. Um, the other thing that's really kind of important is uh, it's called uh, light transmission. So every lens is rated based on how much light it allows to pass through it. So most of the lenses are anywhere from 10% to probably 25 or 30%. They call it VLT, visual light transmission. And uh, most our brown lenses and our uh, smoke lenses have uh, light transmission anywhere from 12 to 15%. And that's pretty good for most people if you get under 10 percent, it gets to be too too dark and it's not really safe to wear them in a lot of situations Um, but like the copper lenses i talked about those are 22 percent let's 22 percent of light through so that's going to be a little lighter and it brings in more light when it's overcast or dark outside and it allows you to see better and uh uh, another you know when i was at pure fishing i developed a uh sunglasses that had a yellow lens in it. And I didn't really realize how, uh, how much that would change when you're out early in the morning or late, just before the sun goes down and you use a yellow lens. It really, it cuts the glare because it's polarized, but it also brightens things up. So you can see a lot of contrast and I like to wear them. I hunt as well. So I, I deer hunt. And I wear yellow lenses when I go deer hunting early in the morning or late afternoon because you can see more contrast. So you can see those deer a lot easier. And it's the same way when you're fishing. So like if you're out on your boat early in the morning, right as sun's coming up and you're flying across the lake, you want to wear some yellow lenses because it's going to brighten things up and you're going to see things a lot better um, at that time of the day. I mean, you guys both need probably four or five pair of sunglasses from Cascade. Holy crap, man. We just got alert. Dude, (laughs) that was like, that went, that was awesome. I'm getting sunglasses now. I had no idea. Yeah. Like, um, and, and the price point you talked about, like I can get behind that because I, I like look at some of those sunglasses out there. That's one of the reasons why I don't have a good pair of sunglasses. I look at the, I look at some price tags like $150, like, uh, <laughs> but like yeah. if I buy, if I buy like four or five cast kings, you know, I'm, I'm whole, I'm covering the whole light spectrum and I yeah. pay the same price for like one of those other glasses. Well, and like you said, a lot of people lose sunglasses. So, yes. you know, when I started working, I don't remember the exact statistic, but it's like, 
I think most people lose a pro a dozen pair of sunglasses a year or something like that, or break them or lose them or whatever, you know? And, uh, if you lose a $25 pair, it hurts a lot less than losing a $150 pair. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I get it. Cause yeah, I, I, I used to spend so much on sunglasses. Then my wife is like, that's enough. <laughs> Cause then yeah. you, you, you do exactly what you just said, sat on it. Yeah. Jeez. Right. Oops. And then, that's right. it. There goes two hundred dollars. I'm like, oh my gosh! I think I did it once or twice. I was like, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I got to stop doing that. But no, you, I, I think you're definitely spot on. And then I, I really didn't know how much it plays into effect until what you just explained. That was awesome. Like I had yeah, no idea. I, you know, and I didn't either when it before I started working on sunglasses, and that was probably I don't know seven eight years ago. And some of the pros I talked to. Um, you know, one of the pros at Pure Fishing was Hank Parker, and Hank is a great guy. And uh, I sat down with him one time, and we talked about sunglasses, and he was explaining some things to me. And I, and I went out and checked it out, and I'm like, wow, I didn't really know I needed that many sunglasses. But uh, he's right. <laughs> wow. It makes a difference uh, when you're fishing, which mm. pair of sunglasses you wear. Mm. If, if, you were on, if you were to choose one lens, which, which lens would you go with? I would probably pick a brown lens um, if you're fishing mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it works great if it's bright and sunny out. Um, two, it provides some contrast. So if you like to sight fish or you like to look at the bottom, especially, you know, in the spring when you guys are, if you're fishing on beds in the spring, you can mm -hmm. see things a lot better with a, a brown lens versus a smoke lens. So, um, do you guys know what I mean by a smoke lens versus a brown lens? I know what the brown lens is. The smoke, is it kind of like, um, like a grayish gray? Yeah. 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 Is Just it? a second. Sure. I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. I cracked another beer, by the way, guy. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm going to grab another beer too. While, while, yep. while, uh, Scott's grabbing, grabbing Go those ahead. glasses. This episode was helped brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. They're a brewery out there in Eastern Iowa. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by Kelowna and check out their brewery. Great food at the restaurant there. Great beer, obviously. If you're in the Midwest, check out any high V's. I believe they carry the six packs and they have different types of flavors. So you guys are going to want to, you know, definitely try that out. And I think throughout this whole process, Fishing Kid and myself for Beer Fish Fanatics, we're going to be doing some giveaways here and there. If you guys can go ahead and tag us here and there with your Kelowna beers. This is my away time. <laughs> yeah oh i see I, I i got the like i said i got the four daughters i love them to death you know and the yeah. thing is i i work full-time from home and then on top of that i i got two of them are still too young not in school yeah i got a three-year-old and a one-year-old and then i got drop off the you know the eight-year-old the six-year-old and you and my wife works at the hospital so she's like you know whatever she's on call so i'm kind of I do. Wow, you're a busy guy. Oh yeah. But I love it. I love this thing. I, it's life. I, Scott, I would not change it for the world. Cause I know it's fun. Oh, I love it because everybody asked me, dude, you are insane. Cause we started this podcast, um, just last year and it's came so many, we, we literally grow like 25% viewer and listen really? every month. It's insane. Yeah. Wow, it's like, that's awesome. we, I mean, we, we started this thing like we had, okay, we get one person that listened to a bunch of two idiots that, you know, love fishing and beer. Next thing you know, it, it keeps growing. Then it went another 25% one month. And then, I mean, we're like a couple months in, we're like, we got almost like a couple thousand, almost a thousand wow, or so. You know really what cool. I mean? Yeah. It's, it's insane. So we, we just love it. So it's, it's, it's just fun to us, but we just want it. We want it to be us. So. That's good. Well, I mean, and, and that's what works for everybody is they want, they want people to be themselves, you know, they don't want it rehearsed. They want the exactly. true thing coming out of your mouth as is, you know, it just makes, makes life more real, I guess. Right. I agree. I agree. So we got another beer. Um, all right, you guys all set. We're set right here. Right yep, all right. Let me, let me show you this. So smoke. Okay. So that's the Brown, right? Is that, is this that... is, this is yellow. Yellow. Um, okay. So the listeners, so you guys can yellow tish tint sunglasses. We're trying to see the the difference um, between the yellow and the brown and the smoke. So here we go. 
So you guys can see that now it's, it's yellow. Yes. See that? So gotcha. these are the lenses that, and they're, they're really light. So you can see through them and they kind of brighten things up and you can mm -hmm. see my eyes real good. But again, these are good for early in the morning or right before the sun goes down. And yeah. uh, like I said, I wear them for uh, when I deer hunt, just because you can yeah. see movement a lot better and see pick up the deer easier. Yeah, because when I go through the shooting range, I use a yellow, exactly like that, like a, yeah. a yellow one. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Makes and sense. then this particular one is, is that the copper? This one should be the copper one. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so this is the copper color. Oh, okay. So it's a kind of an amber, it's mm. kind of between uh, brown and the yellow. Okay. Gotcha. So this is also good um, on an overcast day, on a darker day, and it'll provide a lot of contrast. So the, the greens will be greener, you'll see browns better, and um, it allows you to see into the water and you can pick up a lot more things on the bottom, vegetation, fish move around, all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then the next one is, this one is a brown lens. Gotcha. So that one uh, allows a little bit less light through than the copper one. So this is like 22% and this is like 15% light transmission. Gotcha. So that means 15% of the light that's hitting it actually gets through to your eyes. The rest is filtered out. Okay. And then... This is the, uh, this is what I call a smoke lens or people call it a gray lens. Oh, I see. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so this, um, this color lens has the most realistic, realistic color reproduction. So like when you look through these browns are still going to appear brown, blues are blue, reds are reds and so on. So it doesn't really change the color spectrum that you see. Mm -hmm. It's more realistic color and it filters out of all of that light. That's why this is good for um, bright sunlight, bright sunny days. Hmm. Um, and then this one is a brown lens with a mirror coating. So, you know, the mirror coatings are really um, cosmetic more than anything. Okay. They do darken the lens a little bit because they reflect some light. So if this is a brown lens and it's a 15% um, light transmission, it might be now... 13% or 14%. So it changes it a little bit, um, but it's mostly cosmetic. So there's, you know, blue mirror, red mirror, green mirror, silver mirror, all sorts of different, uh, almost anything you can imagine. Hmm. So. Holy cow. I am blown away. Cool, man. I, I'm really blown away. Like, uh, like the, the amount of that goes behind these sunglasses now. And the good thing is about this, if, if your kids grab them and you sit on them, you know, they're going to go right back to the way you had them. So you don't have to worry about that. All right, we got to cop some kit. <laughs> <laughs> well, like now I could make like a, a lot of times it's like, oh, I'll just grab whatever sunglasses. Yeah. But now yeah. I actually, I'll know what to look for. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and just to give you guys a little bit more education on sunglasses, a lot of the, the more inexpensive sunglasses are made out of polycarbonate. So they're, they're heavier, they're mm -hmm. stiffer. You won't be able to do this with them. They'll they'll break if you bend them that much, and they're they're cheaper. The material's cheaper, and a lot of them use um, what they call a regrind material. So it's maybe recycled material that's ground up, and they try and mold it again. And and that at, the more you do that, the weaker it gets, and the, the worse the material properties are. So it's not going to be as good. But that's what the really cheap ones are that you see in, in the stores itself for five dollars, ten dollars. And then the lenses are usually not polarized when you get down there too. The, the polarization um, costs a little bit more for the lenses. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a good thing we have an engineer here, Kit, that he knows the hell he's <laughs> talking about. I love it. <laughs> we got to have somebody to balance, uh, balance us out, I suppose, on our show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure you guys do. You get, you guys are doing fine, obviously. <laughs> all right we, cheers to that we, we have our moments thank you scott i appreciate that <laughs> um oh that was good i had to go to another stout i love the stout you guys gotta try i'm, I'm t all right scott let let us know whenever you come back to iowa love to you okay. know get it you know hopefully this COVID thing kind of calms down whatever goes away or well, i don't think it's going away but hopefully it calms down but yeah 
if you ever come back to Iowa, definitely reach out to us. Love to get, go fishing with you. And uh, I, love, I love catching walleyes too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember last time I've been walleye fishing. It's been a long time. I mean, I go back to Iowa a couple times a year, but we didn't go back this year be, or last year. Usually come by Christmas, but we didn't go this year. And Gotcha. Yeah. No. It, uh, it's hopefully yeah. this summer I get up there. Oh, reach out to us. Let us know when you're up here. Uh, we'll go grab. If we don't grab a beer, we'll go grab some. Oh, you know what we'll do? Because I don't know if you heard the episode. We, we, we had Bruno, um, beer with Bruno guy, but he, he okay. he's the owner of all these you know, El Bait shop, um, you know, Carol brewing and everything, but he also has, um, the, uh, was that the whiskey place kit? You know what I'm talking about? The underneath, um, um, oh, is this in Des Moines or where? Yeah, yeah it's in Des Moines. What is it? Uh, what do you call those? Speak. It's, uh, it's not it's so speak easy. Ken, Ken's it's not speak so easy. speak easy. That's yeah. what it is. Ken's speak not so speak easy. Okay. So okay. we'll take you. Um, I'll, I'll hit up Bruno. We'll, we'll make right. it, it. It'll be a blast down in, in Des Moines. Yeah. It's, um, he, he runs that spot and they got some amazing whiskey there so okay that sounds good yeah let, let good. us know when when you're in town so we'll definitely take you out for that Absolutely. Um, my I, I guess my only last question or or i just you know kind of want to know a little bit more about um is what do you whether it's you or, or just casking have coming up and when I say coming up, whether it's, you know, product or development of anything, what, what, what's, what's coming up that's going to be the new hot item, the, would you say, in the next year or two or whatever the case may be? Well, we've uh, – I didn't even talk about this. I should have. Um, we, we've got a couple uh, uh, sister brains too. So last year we launched a, a new outdoor brand. It's called, uh, it's called Extremis. Okay. So this brand is more focused on camping, uh, outdoors. Um, we've got um, some, uh, right now, so far, we've only launched, we've launched some items, but we've got those, those uh, uh, water bottles. We've got um, hammocks. We've got some paracord. We've got tons more things coming to launch on the, with, with that particular product line. So that covers everything from, camping to biking to hunting to fishing to you know it's it's a much broader uh brand for us mm -hmm. and so we're working on a lot of products for that that will come out we're gonna have a lot of products this year actually too i can't tell you specifically what they are but Dang it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we also have a lot of new reels coming out um we've got some you know uh, about a year ago we launched a a casting reel called the uh, bassinator and yep. we've got several uh pros on the on the pro circuit using the bassinator and it is a phenomenal reel and so we've got a spinning version of that coming out mm. and then we've got some other uh pro level uh casting reels and spinning reels coming too in the next uh next year probably so lots of rods coming lots of reels coming uh, we also got some really awesome fishing line coming. So be looking for that in the next uh, probably month or so. Mm. And uh, it's going to change things. It is incredible line. If you like to finesse fish, use spinning reels, this line's perfect. So all right, I'm you guys, you guys are going to love it. Trust me. I'm going to grab a few man, for sure. <laughs> we need to get you guys set up with some stuff. So uh, yeah, don't worry. Just let us know whenever. I mean, we. That, all right. I, lo I love to go fishing whenever I get the opportunity. And this, okay. guy, this guy over here tells me. So then, hey, the bite is hot. I'm there, man. There you go. So <laughs> hey, where do you guys where do you guys usually fish at? Um, I go down to Red the Red Rock area, Red Rock, okay. the Lake Red Rock, fish below okay. the dam fish the lake a lot i catch i think most of my walleyes below the dam down at red rock okay oh, that's yeah. a secret hopefully our listeners don't yeah don't crowd down there <laughs> and uh we kayak fish i mean he kayak fishes quite a bit now and he's really uh you know the crazy thing is i i don't he doesn't take too much credit he doesn't want to i don't know why but a lot of our listeners and people like they started getting into kayak fishing because of him his channel nice and yeah he doesn't know that but i've i've seen people like yeah they, you know he his his kayak you know videos and everything everybody you know super 
excited about and they yeah went out and bought a kayak so yeah we started kayak That's we cool. kayak fish quite a bit too so uh okay. i'm i'm hopefully i'm upgrading next next this this spring i'm i'm, I'm hopefully i mean i don't know if my wife's seen this or not because she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll give it a thumbs down if she sees this episode she'll be like nope no more man you can't upgrade no more man yeah i i kayak fish too it's a, it's a lot of fun it's nice to nice. get back into waters that you can't get with a regular boat so i I go down to the uh, ocean once in a while and fish the marshes and stuff. And I got to tell you a quick story before, before you guys let me go. Sure. Um, a few years ago, we were down fishing uh, the intercoastals in, in some of the marshes. And there was three of us fishing in kayaks. One of the guys hooked into something and he's just, he's tugging on it and it's not moving. And we're like, he's like, what is this? And all, all of a sudden I hear him yelling. And this was right, it was almost starting to get dark. So sun's starting to go down. He hooks into a, a manta ray and it's got like a 10 foot wingspan. And this thing comes out of the water and it's doing this, jumping about probably eight feet out of the water, about 10 feet wide. And it's pulling him against the current. And I'm like, we were just like, our jaws were on the ground. We're like, holy cow. So he's got this thing hooked. And then it, it just stopped and it sat on the bottom and you, you can't do anything with it. Right. I mean, it's just sucked to the bottom of the, the marsh. Mm -hmm. And we were about probably 60 yards from where the boat ramp was. And uh, people were out fishing on the docks along the boat ramp. And there's some lights out there and they, they could, they knew somebody was out there, but they couldn't really see us that well. And the, uh, the man ray started decided he's going to move and he started coming up again and he was swimming right towards those docks and you hear people yelling and screaming and they start running off the dock. Oh, <laughs> and about that time, um, he broke him up, it broke off and, and he got away and, and, uh, but that hat, it took about probably 45 minutes. He was messing around with that thing. One of us, wow. the other guy actually went over there and grabbed the rod and they were both tugging on it, trying to get him up. But, but it was it was a crazy experience. Unfortunately, it was too dark and we couldn't get any videos or anything. But oh, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy! Just thinking about yeah. catching something like that, Kit. Oh, Come sweet. on, we, we we gotta make a trip, man. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I know. yeah, we we gotta make a trip. <laughs> All right, man, um, dude, this so I, I really if we get an opportunity, Scott, definitely love to have you back. Maybe next year, or you know Absolutely. what, we we can make it a yearly thing, whatever. Because you know, sure. whatever new products you want to you want to talk about, it'd be uh, it'd be awesome okay. to get you back on. Um, you, you got anything else for him, Kit? Uh, usually at at this point in the show, uh, we try to get our guests to talk about their you know how how can people reach out to you? Like, what are some ways to get a hold of you? Or like, if somebody is interested in purchasing casking stuff, you know, where, where can they find your products? Yeah. So, um, almost all of our products are on, uh, Amazon. So you, most of our stuff's on Amazon. You can look on Amazon. Uh, we sell at tackle warehouse. Uh, we have all of our products on casking.com. So you can buy any of those places. And, uh, we also have a few items now. Um, it, you guys don't have any Academy stores up where you're at, but we do have some some combos and some fishing line that's in Academy stores, which is more the South than, than the North. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, Instagram is SH Thomas 64 and uh, Facebook is just Scott Thomas. And uh, you can find me that way. If you go to our website, you can find some more information about uh, the rest of the people that work at Cast King. Um, we're always looking for uh, new people to help represent our brand as well. We've got a, a, a program called uh, Cast King Brand Ambassadors. We call them KBAs. Mm. And especially up where you guys are at, we're looking for more people up in the uh, upper Midwest in, uh, in that area for walleye, for muskie. We have all sorts of walleye rods and equipment that um, – is, a, is perfect for that market up there, but we don't have a lot of people up there yet. So if you're interested in representing Cast King, you can go to our website and there's a, there's a link in there that talks about KBAs and how to apply and what you need to do. And please go there if you're interested in helping to, uh, to promote the product for us. Perfect. And you just got like thousands of submissions. 
<laughs> just, just, just FYI on that one, Scott. I just like, you sure you want that? No, it's just kidding. But yeah, you oh, that's just, great. I mean, the yeah. the more the merrier, you know. And and uh, it, it kind of feeds on itself, you know. A lot of our guys that uh, they fish on a budget, and we're a good fit for a lot of people, and they start using our product and realize how good it is, and they're like, wow, how come how come you guys haven't been around? You know, how come I haven't found you sooner? You know, so. Um, at, at the end of the day, go to Amazon. You can see the reviews, guys. I mean, yeah, that, absolutely. That, you know, and, and that's you know, that's that's all you need to say. Yep, absolutely. Pretty much. So, absolutely. um, dude, other than that, man, Scott, this has been fun. Definitely yeah. appreciate it, and, and and I can't wait to get you back on because uh, I'm always gonna hopefully offline. You can tell us, you know, secret stuff and all that <laughs> stuff. But I know you probably can't, but it's all good, man. So I, I definitely I appreciate appreciate your time and, and, and your knowledge and um after this i am gonna get a couple sunglasses for sure all right well i, I appreciate you guys having me on and uh i know when you reached out to me and i saw you were in iowa i'm like well he's from iowa i gotta talk to him so uh it's, a, it's great i had a lot of fun thanks I, iowa connection you know what you, you know at the, this is the thing i root for the hawkeyes on every game except for one obviously, or I mean, I will stay, I, I will stay. I always root for them for every game, except for one game. So yeah. just, you know, fellow, fellow cyclone there. So definitely appreciate that. You keeping it, you know, keep the love That's, in Iowa, man. I appreciate right. that, Scott. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks. thanks. Thanks guys. Cheers. 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 cheers.